Hey everyone, Rachel here with Things We Wear and today I wanted to do an episode all about fit aesthetic and what that means and how you can start to develop your eye for a fit aesthetic if you are an aspiring pattern maker or interested in fashion or even vintage fashion. Um, I think understanding styles and understanding a sense of style is also understanding fit aesthetic. And so let me just explain a little bit about fit aesthetic. So let's... um. Let's go shopping. Uh, let's see here, Saks. Let's see what's at Saks. And I can tell you more about fit aesthetic. So I think one thing that a lot of people get wrong, in my opinion, is that um, pattern, pattern makers are often kind of classified as very technical jobs. Um, I don't think this was always true. In fact, it definitely wasn't true. When we think about the first real commercial clothing designer or really known designer, it's Charles Worth. And he was also a dressmaker. So it used to be that dressmakers and designers, it was kind of like one category. Um, and even, you know, very revolutionary people have been in the fashion industry have been also pattern makers, very inventive pattern makers and dressmakers. So if we think about someone like Madame Vianney, if you don't know who Madame Vianney is, um, how do I spell that? Mm, there it is. Madame Vianney was known uh, in the early 1900s, kind of 20s era. She did these beautiful bias draped dresses. Um, and this was really what she sort of championed is figuring out how to make fabric drape in a way that um, in this very almost Grecian sculptural way, she was incredibly innovative um, and really unique for her time or honestly, in any time. <laughs> um, so I think as time has gone on and we've become, and they divided the roles into designer and and pattern maker, whereas it used to be one role, um, often, sure, designers are making design decisions, um, but I think there's a lot of creativity that needs to come from a pattern maker so that we can give creative solutions and understand what the designer is trying to achieve with their vision. Uh, so, okay, so let's go back to, um, uh, let's go back to Saks. Where did I put it? There it is. All right, so let's just check out some dresses, some evening dresses, and we can talk about fit aesthetic. Um, so what I mean about fit aesthetic, and let's start with some very basic design principles. I hope there's a model. Here we go. So the idea when we look at it, any design, and unfortunately they cut off her face, which I don't love, um, is that the point of a garment is to is to bring attention to a particular area. Generally speaking, we're going to say it's the face, right? So when we, you think about costume design, the major principle, well, there's a few major principles of being a costume designer, but number one is to draw attention to the important parts of the actor. So to create visual, um, to create visual direction. Uh, so if, if the person on stage, let's say this is an actor in a play, um, if there's no direction, if her, the dress was very busy and there's nothing leading our eye to her face or her hands, um, we might just end up focusing on the outfit and not really get the message that the actor is trying to portray. So this is pretty important to be aware of where attention is supposed to go when you look at a style or a garment um, and understand the purpose of that garment. So in this case, um, this is a pretty simple garment, but you can say the ombre... Um, I'm not, I, I feel fine about this garment. It is fairly simple, so it does kind of dry your eye up, particularly if she had an interesting hair style or some really dramatic earrings that would work well with this dress because it's a little bit simple, but the ombre does sort of draw your eye in a direction rather than it being a flat color where you might not be drawn in any particular direction. The ombre does kind of draw us in and then up. Um, so that's that's often when you see a design that gets it's larger at the hem and then it gets smaller, the intent of that is to draw our eye up towards her face and maybe her neck and chest area. Uh, so let's look at some other ones so I can show you some contrast here. <laughs> and of course, when we talk about where people are drawn. So like I said, mostly you wanna be drawn to someone's face because the face is where we communicate. So for the most part, that's, that's the most important part 
of our bodies, right? Um, but that might change. Like for instance, right now we're all wearing masks. So drawing attention to your face might not really convey anything right now. Um, I actually think now is the time for eyes. <laughs> so I've gotten really into doing a little bit more dramatic eye makeup than I used to do. Um, I've bought some more glittery eye makeup and gotten into some more dramatic eyeliner because if you have to communicate with just your eyes, then you need your eyes to kind of shine, right? So let's look at this. I'm not a super fan of this dress, but I don't hate it. Okay, so this is a great example. Here's another thing that people often draw attention to. This ruffle kind of leads us down to her leg, this little, this slit where we just see like a little flash of leg and a beautiful shoe. So this dress, I would say, is trying to draw attention down to the legs. And that's okay. Maybe that's Maybe that's a really great feature that you love about your body or you have a beautiful pair of shoes you want to show off. Um, I think that's fine. So if I was given this design, if I got a drawing um, from a designer, I would understand that like, oh, they're creating this ruffle to create a little show here. <laughs> this is where I is going. Um, and it's, you know, so I, I want to make sure that this drape is really beautiful and hangs in a way that draws your eye to the place where the focus should be. So that's really my job as the pattern maker is to understand that direction. And I think if you don't study design and you don't understand the design, it's hard for you to make decisions that make the design effective, right? Because a drawing is one thing, but making it into life, making it cascade in a way that is, you know, just flawless and really gets exactly what you need out of this dress, that's that incorporates both an art and a science. Um, so this is my argument and why I say I don't believe pattern making is just a science. Um, there are no, there are things that I believe to be true about pattern making, things that little principles that I've come to do on my patterns or shapes that I like to see. But at the end of the day, there are really no hard and fast rules to pattern making. The gist of it is that you need something to fit over a body. And the rest of it is all art. Like there's no nothing about this that is right or wrong. It is about creating the shapes and the structural look that you want. Um, so when people talk about making uh, pattern making and pattern making books and, and the right way to make patterns. I I think it's great to learn as much as you can, but I also think you need to take everything with a grain of salt because at the end of the day, your job is not to create a perfect pattern. Your job is to create a vision and to create basically like a sculpture out of fabric. Um, and there is no right way to do that, if that makes sense. Um, you really need to just uh, just try to understand the design and understand principles of pattern making so that you can create shapes that create a garment that shows what the person what the designer wants to wants to see. So let's look at a few other dresses. Um, let's see. So this one, <laughs> this one's kind of funny. Um, this big bow, I would say this is this is definitely drawing attention to her neck, shoulders, um, and bust area because it's sort of like she's a little gift. <laughs> like there's a big bow around her and her the present is her face and her beautiful shoulders and neck. And so I actually, uh, well, this is, I think, a little bit, um, I think, I, I feel like this isn't a design everybody could pull off. I kind of love it, though. In a way, it's a little bit cheesy in some ways, but in another way, it's, um, it could be really cute and uh, with the right hair. And, and I, I would definitely do, again, like maybe some, <laughs> it'd be cute if you had some big white, uh, like daisy earrings or something, a little bit like Kate Spade kind of style. Um, but this again, see the, the focus is these lines are drawing us up and towards her face. So, and then the bottom half is actually very simple. So we're not really looking at the bottom half. I feel nothing about this trumpet shape. Eh, it's fine. I sort of wish that this was maybe a wrap dress that kind of had like a tulip shape. And I think that would more mimic this upper area here. Um, this just feels like it's kind of pasted together, in my opinion. Um, I like designs to feel sort of cohesive. And um, I think it'd be it would be nice to have a little like to have this line here, continue down and then wrap around her legs. But that's just me. Um, but yeah, so design here pretty clear where we're supposed to look. 
Uh, let's look at some others. So of course there's lots of places that we can be directed to look. <laughs> this one's an interesting one. I don't know if I love this dress, but it's worth talking about. Um, so there's a lot of places that we're looking here. This is a little bit confusing. Um, number one, we have all these buttons that are leading our eye somewhere. I would say they're kind of leading our eye down into these cutouts here. Oops, I didn't really want to zoom in there. Um, so that, now we're looking at these cutouts. Personally, I'm not a fan of these cutouts. I think, uh, and it's not something specific about this design, I just think in general, unless they're very beautifully shaped. This is usually the worst part of most people's bodies. <laughs> um, I, maybe there's a few people in the world who can pull off showing some mid side tummy area, um, but this is a really hard area to expose. And then I think these hard lines are not really doing her any favors because, you know, she, this is a beautiful person here. She's got a lovely figure. And then these harsh lines aren't really, to me, doing anything for her it's just like okay here's my body it's uh, here's a square <laughs> of my body i also feel like the fit there's something funky going on here um if we can get in closer yeah like this isn't my favorite it's pulling here and i would think this is actually where you probably they didn't do a dart because they wanted this to be clean but i think it would have looked better with a dart because you wouldn't have that oops sorry this pull line from her armpit down because you can see there's excess fabric here and that's because there's no dart so when in doubt dart <laughs> that's <laughs> that's always my saying I love a dart they serve a purpose I don't know why people are so anti-dart these days um oh this is interesting I don't know if I'm prepared to talk about that let's <laughs> let's do this one this is kind of similar um again we have this cutout here and these straps here you know, now that I'm seeing it on a body, I don't love the drape of this. Here, I thought, oh, this could be interesting. Um, and I would say, generally speaking, this is kind of like drawing focus here. Um, you know, and, and these dramatic lines going up to your neck will bring focus to your face. So I think that's a, a good thing if that's, generally speaking, we want focus to be on our face. Um, but I'm sort of meh about the rest of the dress. It just feels a little discombobulated to me personally. Uh, let's see. But I, I suppose I come from things. I'm very, I really want to see, I want to see a direct intention of every style. I don't really like styles that don't seem to have a purpose <laughs> that are just like, here's clothes. I want to know what I'm doing with it. Um, this I actually really love. And let me explain why. These feathers are so they're very fun and they dry your eyes and they're gonna move a lot when you walk. And so this is a great dress for dancing um, or, or just if you're kind of moving around. Um, this dress is gonna dry your eyes to the legs. So this is a great dress for someone who um, has beautiful legs or great shoes they wanna show off. Although I would say too, this is not really a shoe moment. This is more of a leg moment. So you'd wanna maybe be more minimal with your shoes. Um, but yeah, so th this dress is kind of bringing us down here. And I love that it's simple here. It's It seems consistent with the style. I mean, I could see this style actually being more closed up up here, maybe like a boat neck. Um, I think I like to see dresses that don't, that kind of pick a place to show off. So if you're gonna show off your legs, then I would say be more covered up on top. That's my opinion. Just because then it makes the direction very clear. And uh, it, it just, it's very elegant that way. You wanna, when you start showing too much, it's distracting. And the point of clothes, like I've said, is that you want to to enhance, right? So we're not trying to make this person look different than they look. We're not trying to make them feel um, not like themselves. We're trying to make them feel like the best version of themselves. So if she has beautiful legs that she wants to show off, great. So let's, let's enable that and let's not distract her beautiful legs with a lot of stuff up here. You know, I definitely wouldn't wear a big necklace with this. This is a kind of situation that you'd want to be more minimal so that because you have a um, quite, you know, a lot of movement here and the feathers are kind of a little bit flashy. Uh, so I, I would want to keep it minimal in the neck area and in the chest area. Uh, all right, let's see what else they have here. Another, 
I lost my train of thought. Oh, here we go. Let's look at this. This is beautiful. <laughs> I love stuff like this. Okay, wrap dresses. I'm wrap dresses you can never go wrong with. I think wrap dresses are like the universal dress that looks good on everyone. And the reason I think that is because you're creating defined waist shape. You create this triangle here with these drag lines that draw your eye up to the neck and the face. And then also you have um, a very becoming shape here that opens up and shows, you know, even if you have minimal shoes, but shows a little bit of leg, um, but not too much. Uh, I think it's a the type of dress that is both not uh, overboard, it always looks classy, and I think that's because you have these really simple, clean, beautiful lines that draw your eye both up and, and down to your, your legs and ankles. Um, so this is a great example of that, and what I love about this dress so they covered up her arms, which I think was a very great choice because instead they chose to showcase her legs a little bit. I think the cut of this is a little bit severe for my taste. It feels like it's sort of like sharp and then down, and I would rather see it be more of a gentle slope so that it, the shape is kind of consistent. Um, that's just my opinion, but I do, I love that it has the translucent layer with the opaque layer underneath, so nothing is too dramatic. Um, we're seeing some of her arm, but it's not super contrasty from where her skin begins and where her arm is covered up. So it's a very nice, flowy, beautiful dress. I can imagine if she's walking around, this dress would look really great um, at a party or walking somewhere. Uh, just so gorgeous, and it looks really beautiful there. See, I think when I see here, I like it better, and that's because I don't see so much leg. I was hoping that this would be a little more covered up so that when you do see leg, it's like, mm, just just the right amount, you know? <laughs> not too much, not too little. Um, maybe I'm a little bit on the conservative side. And it's not conservatism as in, like, I think people should cover up, but more just that I... I don't like it when an outfit is so busy that you don't get to focus on the thing that's important, which is someone's someone's face and, and the way they communicate, if they're communicating with their hands or their arms. Um, it's important to bring attention to where it should go. Uh, so let's let's see if there's anything else. Um, this one again, this is a this is a leg showcase dress. <laughs> uh, so you can see she's very covered up on top and then in the bottom very exposed uh so yeah this is a dress again you'd want to be simple with your makeup maybe just you could do a bright lip and then keep your eyes just kind of a shimmery gold or something simple and uh, and just let let your great legs show <laughs> any of those runners out here this is a great dress for all of you um i'm not a super fan of puff i just think it looks like it doesn't fit her right personally um but some people puff sleeves look wonderful on they don't look good on me so um i guess i don't really gravitate towards them <laughs> i have kind of wide shoulders so it's not really a look that works for me super well this is really interesting let's check out this this is a bit different from everything else we've been looking at uh, this feels i would say a bit i don't even know what to call this like turn of the century <laughs> it's a weird length to me and okay so what i don't like about this is i don't know where i'm supposed to look it feels kind of like librarian but not in a way that is like sometimes librarian is fun and cute i'm not sure what this is maybe different shoes would would help me um but i'm not i'm not really digging this I'd have to see maybe in a different styling or more glamorous hair or something. It could be cool and kind of minimalist if you had like some tonal shoes that were kind of interesting and then, boy, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have an answer for this one. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, this is great. So this is a great example of what I'm talking about. So she's very covered up up top. I don't know if I love this. Still getting to know it. It's very interesting, this whole thing. Um, I would want to touch it. The fabric, I don't know what this is, like stretch corduroy. It's sort of casual. Um, this is very slow to react. But what I like about it is you're just getting a little peek, little peek here, 
and then you get this nice side slit. So you get these little flashes of skin. Uh, I guess it's supposed to be very casual. She's wearing flip-flops, so I suppose that's what we're going for here. But I do think it's interesting in that way. So you're, you're, um, you're choosing parts of your body to show off and directing the eye here. So again, the reason this is important to know is because when not only is it important to understand where your focus should be as a pattern maker and what you're trying to, to give um, the customer and also the designer, you should also be thinking about how this is worn. So you see, I got a little confused about this dress when I first opened it. I thought it was a little dressier and it seems to be more of a casual garment. Um, I feel a little confused. I wish this side slit, it's like this is sort of an interesting twisty thing and I kind of wish the bottom had some interest to it as well. This just kind of like a flat shape. I don't love a really sharp side slit here. Um, this makes it feel kind of I don't want to say cheap, I can't think of another word, but just like less, it looks very casual, this plus the flip-flops. But if that's the look, and the look is to be casual, that's okay. Of course, we all need casual clothes, and I'm currently wearing just workout clothes, so we all need that, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so understanding how it's supposed to be worn, if it's supposed to be worn with cute flip-flops, are you gonna wear it to the beach and then like to lunch later? But it's a nice beach, so you have to get a little bit dressed up. You really need to understand who is this customer and how is she going to wear this? Because that's going to inform a lot of your decisions. Amongst them is going to be how is she going to get into it? So I don't actually know how this dress works. Maybe she has to unbutton it and then she pulls it on over her hips. In which case you'd have to think about having enough room. Maybe the fabric is stretchy, um, but it would need to go over her hips. Uh, so that is a concern and sometimes can be difficult with dresses like this. Maybe there's a, a back zip, which would be weird. I don't really know how you get this on. I suppose it's just over the hip. Does she have a zipper here? She might have a zipper. But this is part of your job as a pattern maker too, to understand that. So, you know, is she, is this kind of casual and she's putting this on over her bathing suit, then you need to make it easy for her to get on. If it's a, an evening gown, with a center back zip, okay, you know what? We don't wear evening gowns every day. It's okay if an evening gown requires maybe a friend to um, to help you zip it up or to help you, you know, snap all the interior snaps so it stays up on a on a strapless dress. But for a casual garment, you need the garment to be able to be taken off and on with ease for the consumer. Uh, so you need to think about the realisticness of this. This is a little bit funky and complicated. Um, so you, you have to be real about that. And that's really what you're there for as a pattern maker and um, tech designer. You need to you know, provide those, those answers or questions for your designer who says, you know, this is the vision I want. This is the person, but I don't, I don't really know how it's going to work. <laughs> and that's where you come in. Um, so again, this is what I'm saying is that this is not, there's no right answer here. I mean, I would say that there's some things that I think to me make more sense than other things, but it's a choice and it's a choice that should be consistent with the design. And in order to do that, you need to understand the design. You need to understand the purpose of the design, where the eye is going and also how the garment is gonna be wear worn and cared for. All of those things come together to answer all these questions about how garments are made and how we use them. So I've already blabbered on for 23 minutes here. Let me see if there's anything else in this selection to discuss. This is actually a really pretty garment. I actually love this. I don't love it on this model, but I think it could be very beautiful. Um, and I'll tell you what I love about it. So I'm, <laughs> this is sort of weird because you're getting all these drag lines here. I think they're intentional drag lines and maybe on a different person they're going to hang differently. But I think this is really creating this beautiful shape here that's really bringing your eye up. I think this is a this is a garment that's great for a lot of people of different sizes. Um, you're creating a really strong waist shape here. So, you know, maybe someone who who needs a little more waist definition, this dress could be very becoming on them. Um, I feel like I'm included in that and I don't like things that don't have a defined waist um, because I'm sort of a straight shape. So finding garments that give me a waist is always a bonus. Um, and this 
yeah, this is very beautiful. I think I think it's doing exactly what it needs to do. It's simple and clean and elegant. Um, and I think it could be worn in a lot of situations. Uh, and then the great thing is that this is where you get to wear some super cool earrings and maybe some really interesting, you know, statement shoes um, or not. I mean, you could go either way, maybe just a simple metallic shoe, but then some really beautiful uh, interesting earrings that bring your eyes up to your face and that's really where we want to be looking right so so this is I think this is a great dress and the reality when I think what a lot of designers and um, even people who are interested in fashion struggle with is that we all like interesting things I know I'm included in this issue I love a funky print and some things that look wild but at the end of the day, yeah, see, this is a great example. This is super fun. I love the shoes. It's funky. It's interesting. But what happens when you wear something like this is, is the your eye isn't going anywhere in particular. Your eye is the whole piece. It's the shoes. It's the dress. It's the print. It's the funky earrings. And especially this image here, this is almost kind of like a 90s. Yeah, I would say this this feels very 90s to me. Um, and I I like it, but it's more like your whole body is a is like an artwork and and you are the canvas rather than the point of this is to bring focus. So I think if I were a costume designer, this is the kind of thing you might put a background character in because the point of them is not really to they're not really there to be the star of the show. They're there to be you know, dancing and these feathers would move and it's colorful and they're creating, um, they're creating decor that brings focus in on the main person. But the main person, if, if I was costuming them, they'd be wearing maybe just this dress and beautiful earrings. I often find the people who are the stars of the show usually need to wear something simple but beautiful and elegant and very simple in decor as well, like earrings. Um, I'm not a proponent of wearing too much jewelry. I think less is more because the point is that, of course, we want to look at their face and see them as a human being shine. So um, so when you're getting dressed, you know, you can think about is the point of your outfit to be seen as a whole or is the point to showcase you and um, and bring attention to your face? And I think there's different ways you can go about getting dressed, but I often find when we look at runway shows, um, it's the models are more like canvases to be decorated in this way and less about bringing focus to their faces as individuals. So that would be like the main difference I find between what we call fashion fashion and what we call costume design because costume design is more character based and more about individuality, whereas, whereas fashion can be just more about just fun. If you want to wear feathers and orange shoes, do it. There's nothing wrong. I don't think there's any wrong answers when it comes to how you get dressed in the morning, but it's more about what the purpose is and what you want out of it and what you're trying to express. So I hope today has been helpful. I know it's a little funky of a video, but I hope this has sort of explained a little bit more what I talk about. And I know in future videos, I plan on discussing more what fit aesthetic is, but I think it's important if you're entering this world to have a strong understanding of design principles, of design history, and um, and to know what it is that you're working on, because <laughs> you can't do it if you don't know. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, please like, subscribe. If you like this video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this and what further you'd like me to explain, because I would love to continue these videos and put education out there for everyone out there. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.